Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh Mas Bro in Basis, meet me again, Cecep Tomasati Sus Estes adalah salah satu ulama besar Bukan hanya di Amerika, tapi di seluruh dunia Dia aslinya dari Texas Alhamdulillah baru sampai ke masjid Alhamdulillah 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 Long time malijinsi Masya Allah, 3 years ago Masya Allah Assalamualaikum. How are you, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Last time we met in here in in Bridgeport Islamic Center. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, Sheikh. Masha Allah. Hope everything good. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I'm gonna open the office for you. Okay. How are you? I hope you still remember me. Three years ago, I think we were here. Oh, no, we were here. Yeah, I think. Okay, alhamdulillah. Here and Bridgeport Islamic Center. It's been long time already. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, I'm gonna set up. I'm gonna open the door. Assalamualaikum. Alhamdulillah. Assalamualaikum. Good guy, good guy, this time. Alhamdulillah. So, uh, build the bridges over there. Yeah. So okay. we did. I think we did about eight or ten bridges actually. So the each bridge was like five hundred bucks each. Mm -hmm. So we got some people together. We raised the money and alhamdulillah, and we built the bridges. Um, those bridges are like over small ravines built out of bamboo. If I get the video, I'll send it to you, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. Because I, I, I have it somewhere in my in my Google Drive. Oh, okay. Yeah. But the 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 setup of the bridges was to cover these uh, mostly the ravines mm -hmm. and um some small rivers that like people because uh, obviously yeah. as you already know some places people have to walk two hours just to, to going around hospitals mm -hmm. to hospitals to get to, get to yeah. school yeah. okay like kids are uh -huh. walking like two hours and just going to school just to go and yes that. you're right you're right and that's that's crazy yeah so um what we did is that um well, I wasn't there. Anyways, <laughs> I just helped to raise the money. But what we did is that we helped for the local organization. There's a brother that used to work for us yeah, in the yeah. past. He came to us and said, hey, this is what I'm doing with Burden Bridges. So we all came together. We raised the money, alhamdulillah. And we built about eight or ten bridges. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. And that cut down for people to be able to get to the hospital yeah, 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 yeah. in 30 minutes rather than two hours. Two hours and, and somebody then, yes, dies right, and then they don't right. need the hospital. They need... <laughs> You know, they need the morgue <laughs> instead. Okay, just stop where you are, wash them, and get out of Okay, it's, kids yeah. were able to actually make it to school. The one that we were really interested in before, unfortunately, we got uh, the project wound down. We started focusing on other things. But one of the main ones that we, we caught the video yep. of parents putting their kids in the bags. Okay, you take your kid, you put them in a bag. Uh -huh. You close them up. And, and then they slide? No, and then you walk across the river oh. with them in the bag. In the bag. Oh, okay, so, so that his clothes don't get wet. Ip, ip. And then you go to the other side and then you unpackage your kid <laughs> and let him to walk the rest of the way to school. Oh, so. But we had seen one of the videos and that was the last one that we really wanted to do something about it. Mm -hmm. But obviously that's a lot more of an engineering yeah, 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 needed yeah. because yeah. It, it needs a suspension mm -hmm. bridge. It's not going to be, uh, you know, just yeah, a little yeah. bamboo bridge like yeah, the you ones we did in yeah, some yeah. of the villages. It needs like a big time suspension mm -hmm. bridge across it. But this is, um, you know, unfortunately, I, I really wish uh, for the municipality yeah, to yeah. get a little bit more involved mm -hmm. on it. But yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll see, inshallah. Right, inshallah, inshallah. One but of the most important things that we found, because in because of how disconnected all of these islands are, mm -hmm. Indonesia, once upon a time, was 99% Muslim. Yes. And what is it now? We lost that. Fortunately, no, you have a lot of people that care, but you have a lot of people that don't, don't care. care. And you have a lot of people that they're very easy to go in, very because easy of the, to go out. Because of the noodle and the rice. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when they give the rice, and then they, they, they get out from the religion. It's a crazy situation. May Allah guide us. Hey, thank you. I what mean, you did in, in Indonesia, though. Allah is a Allah, Allah. May Allah. 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 I hope I go there one day, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. Maybe you can meet me over there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> inshallah. Say sal he says, Salam alaikum. Oh, salam alaikum. How are you? How are you?
MashaAllah, you still healthy. Huh? You did the exercise or? Too much exercise. <laughs> this is the bathroom, sir. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Lock the doors. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Lock the door. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Say the mic, please. Raman, give the mic, please. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. We have a surprise. It surprised me. And somebody just came to the door and said, I want to convert to Islam. Allah, 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 Allah. And his name is Ben Yamin. Here he is right here, and he's going to accept Islam, inshallah. But first, I gotta ask some questions. Number one, is Benjamin the real name that you had since birth? Correct, yes. All right. Is there really a God? Yes. Is God one? Yes. Do we tell God what to do or he tells us what to do? He tells us what to do. All right, that's a good foundation. Now we're gonna get into the real stuff. Yeah. Do you recognize that Allah has no partners at all? Yes. Okay. Oh, I said Allah, didn't I? Yes, you did. Yeah. So I gave it away, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. So we call God by his name. He is a God, but he's the only God. So he has a name, Allah. The early Christians <coughs> used to say Allah. And... Uh, there is recorded in the New Testament of the Bible, in the Gospels, that the one on the cross is saying, Elahi, Elahi, Lima Sabachthani. You know what that means? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now we know that wasn't Jesus because he would never say that. And we know he wasn't on the cross. However, we do know that he was for sure born as a miracle to Mary. And we know that he's gonna come back in the last days. Allah will return him back. And we know also that he did many miracles by the permission of Allah. But all of those miracles are in the Old Testament with other prophets doing them. One of the prophets brought a dead man back to life. One of the prophets fed a lot of people with just crumbs. Suddenly it turns into a lot of stuff that they could uh, eat. So all the way through the miracles of Isa or Jesus, salam, we find that other prophets did the same miracles. So that doesn't make him unique. What makes him unique is his birth. He is a son of a woman 
with no father. But, if you ever thought about this, Adam, alayhi salam, was the first prophet, right? Yes. And Adam had no father and no mother. He was created from the dirt by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then his wife was created from his own bone and she didn't have a mother. And then the creation of all of the people, us, we are still miracles because we are born of a man and a woman. That's a miracle. Yes. And for sure, Isa, Jesus, salam, was born from a woman that had never even known a man. Anyway, that's uh, the big thing that we have to tell you, that we don't worship Jesus. We put him on the high level, and we know that he is going to come back in the last days, but we also know something else. In the last days, it's going to get real, real hard and difficult for people to hold on to their beliefs because that is when the Antichrist will come. And we've been warned about that. And that uh, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, told us that no prophet came except that he warned the people about the Dajjal, the Antichrist. So he continued that custom and warned us about the Antichrist. And uh, I hope I'm not here when that happens. <laughs> but who knows? Anyway, all of that, can you absorb that and uh, relate to it? Yes. All right. Well, then you've got a lot of stuff that um, even the Muslims are not sure about. Huh? <laughs> Some stuff. Anyway, now we do have in Islam, and I'm going to warn you about that before you make your shahada or enter Islam, we do have something that is known as a connection. Salah is a connection with Almighty God. We're required to do that at least five times a day. Did you know about that? Yes, I heard it. Yeah, okay. So that in that connection, we can pray. But it's a guaranteed connection because that is what the prophets used to do. It wasn't until the prophet Muhammad, the last and final messenger, that he came and he warned everybody about his connection. Don't take advantage of it. Don't play with it at least five times a day. Is that right? Yes. We got that? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm not going to ask if anybody ever missed any of that. <laughs> but we're all humans, right? All right. So that's one thing. Then we have the month of Ramadan. Have you heard about that? Yes. What do we have to do in Ramadan? Get the fast for a month. Well, there's a benefit for that, too. Not only do we lose weight, huh? Well, sometimes we gain weight, right? So we make up for it at night, right? Anyway, it is the first time I fasted, uh, the first day. I didn't know. And I thought, man, 30 days? I don't know if I'm going to make it. And whenever the time came to break the fast, they, they, they told me, well, break your fast. I said, Ramadan's not over. <laughs> they said, eat. And the sun went down. I said, huh? Then I realized, ah, uh, it's not, oh, quit sleeping today, man. 
<laughs> oh, dear Lord. Anyway, so that is one of the things that we want to share with you. Another thing is, if Allah makes a way for you to make the pilgrimage, then it's required for us to go for the Hajj. And uh, I don't know what it's going to be this year, but uh, last year we had Hajj. I hope we have it this year. But the good news is you don't have to go to the place that uh, the prophets all go when they get together. We have to go to Saudi Arabia, to Mecca. And that is where Ibrahim, that you're named for, that's where he actually built the first house for Allah. And it's reconstructed there on that same place now. So I think it's a good thing to go in Ramadan and in Hajj. But the only requirement is one time to go for Hajj. Now we're going to come to the big thing, money. Okay. Now, you know in the church you have to give 10% of your income every single week. Right? But it's not that way in Islam. Once a year you have to calculate all of your wealth that you've held for a year. If any time in that year you went zero or down, then the lowest amount that you had is what you have to pay on. But it's not 10%. Did you hear about that? Zakat. It's only 2.5%. And you give it directly to the poor. Is that cool? That is cool. <laughs> That's really cool. Alhamdulillah. And nobody's going to come and check you out and say, hey, what did you make and what did you do? That's, that's forbidden in Islam anyway. So it's up to you to do that. Cool, huh? That's cool. Yeah. So all we have to do now tonight is reaffirm what you already feel. Now, you said to us that you believe in God as one God and he has no partners. But what about Muhammad? Who is he? Muhammad's a prophet. Is that right? Yes. That's where we have him. Do you agree with that? Yes. All right. Okay, now, if you want to do this, we can do that right now in English. <coughs> then, if we complete it, we'll do it in Arabic. All right? All right, sounds good. Okay. So, I'll say it and then you say it. I swear. I swear. There is no God to worship except Allah. But there is no God to worship other than Allah. Perfect. And I swear, speak out, speak out. Uh, button it up, okay? Zip it. We're doing the job here. Okay. Let's start over. I swear, I swear, there's no God to worship. That there is no God to worship except Allah. Except Allah. And I swear. And I swear that Muhammad is his messenger. That Muhammad is his messenger. And Jesus is his messenger. And Jesus is his messenger. Ah, all right. So we'll say that in Arabic, more or less. Ashadu. Ashadu. An la ilaha. An la ilaha. Illa. Illa. Allah. Allah. Wa. Wa. Ashadu. Ashadu. Anna Muhammad. Anna Muhammad. Rasulullah. Rasulullah. Wa Isa. Wa Isa. 
Rasulullah. Rasulullah. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Did you feel anything just now? Because a lot of people, they cheer up. When I gave a shot to one of the brothers, a big brother in the prison, and he started crying right away. And I thought, whoa, this is a tough guy, you know. All of a sudden, and I've seen women cry, and I've seen men break down, and I felt something when I said the Shahada. Do you know why? Do you know why it happened? Because Allah removed all of your sins. And there is something else. The, the baptism, you do that privately in your house or in your shower or whatever, and you wash your body and ask the love to accept that. And you're washing away everything and you're a new person. So when you leave this building, you're just like you came from your mother. Ah. Allahu Akbar. So, how old are you now? I'm 26. No, you're zero. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. Then I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy for you. Anybody want to hug him? Listen, uh, I'm going to introduce him off camera because he is a convert like me. Mark Brisson is, uh, I'll let him tell his own story when we're on the air, but uh, for sure he has a good story to tell. He's been in the military and he's been a captain, right? And he was thinking about, almost did it, becoming a priest. Three, two. And we're coming to you almost live, all the way from right here in Connecticut. So we have a special guest with us tonight. Mark is going to tell his story, how he got to Islam. And then I'm gonna let him do that. And we have a real great crowd here. We're gonna talk about how to share the message with any non-Muslim, especially in the English language. In Allah is the one that chose us to be Muslims. Let me give you a little bit of of background on the Catholic Church. It was in business for time and memorial, long before Jesus was even born. And I just read it today on the internet. They don't have a record of when they started their worship. They started the worship of Saturn. Saturn, the planet, they called it a star, but they were worshiping that. They said that was the father god of all of the gods that they had. And they don't know when it started because it was before the written word. This has a comparison to the translation of the Bible and the translation of the Quran. And that I started out by, by saying that. This is a translation of Quran. This is a translation of the Bible. So there are mistakes in both. Right? You, we all agree with that. Mistakes are in translations. But there's no mistake in the original that came from God. For the Bible and for the Quran. You'll see the people nodding their head. So we have the original Quran. Where is where is the original Quran? It's with Allah. Yeah. But we have 
something on the earth that represents the Quran. We have over two million people that have memorized it and can give it out to us right away and their teachers can catch a mistake even on a letter. Is that true or false? So we have the Quran. What does Quran mean? Recitation. Now, with that, I'm going to turn it over to our brother Mark. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So yes, so my name is uh, Mark Brisson, that's the uh, name of the with, uh, and I also go by uh, Mark Abdurrahman. Uh, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, as you heard, uh, yes, uh, I am a convert to uh, believer to Islam. Alhamdulillah, by the mercy of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my story goes back uh, quite a bit of ways. Uh, I can say, all of my life, I've been a Muslim. Uh, the catch is, I had no idea that's what it was actually called. You see, uh, when I was a young kid uh, in uh, like the fourth grade, we studied uh, world geography. They put up, uh, you know, they had the old carousel slides where we'd spin around and drop the slide down. And okay, maybe I'm dating myself here. But so we got to uh, one of these uh, pictures. It was a column. And uh, fourth grade, fifth grade, I was like, wow, mashallah, it's the most beautiful thing uh, I, I've ever seen. And my teacher said, I'm sorry, you can't go see it because that's for Muslims only. And I just wanted to cry right there because I thought the Kaaba was the most beautiful Mecca, was the most beautiful city ever to, on all of this earth to go to. Uh, and mashallah, uh, what I didn't realize uh, is that was one of the first of many signs uh, in my life where uh, Allah had been uh, calling me to Islam. And uh, even in uh, high school, I joined the Marines at uh, 17 years old. Just before, a year before I even graduated, I spent my entire senior year uh, in the Marine Corps, uh, going down to the recruiter station every single Saturday, uh, doing uh, learning and exercising and everything else before I even went, and uh, I spent eight years with the Marines. During that time, uh, when I signed up, originally they said, don't worry, this is back in 1997, they said, don't worry, no wars will ever happen, it's gonna be peace and quiet, you got nothing to worry about, not a thing, you'll be sitting at home, kicking back, relaxing, you know, if something ever happens, I don't know, you're just gonna stay safe outside. And of course, 9-11 happened, and yep, that went out the window. So I was in the Marine Corps at the time, uh, I was deployed to Iraq in 2003. Uh, my unit was responsible for clearing the minefields, uh, going into uh, Iraq from uh, Kuwait. And uh, subhanAllah, there were so many times uh, where each and every one of us, we should have been killed, but uh, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was watching after us and protecting us. And while we were there, we, were, we ended up making our way all the way up to uh, Baghdad, uh, to Chris, uh, and uh, Ramadi. And uh, during that time, we were progressing so fast, we didn't have enough food, we didn't have enough water. So subhanAllah, the, the, uh, the Iraqi people, the people we, who we were invading our country, they saw we were literally sleeping in our graves. We would dig a hole in the ground just below the surface that we'd sleep in, so if, if a, a bomb or water went off, we would not get blown to pieces. So they saw we were living in our graves, sleeping in our graves, and they were mortified by this. They saw we didn't have food. Uh, they saw we didn't have water. We were rationed one bottle of water uh, per day. And these people, mashallah, they invited us into their house to sleep in their house. They invited us to sit and have breakfast, have dinner with them. They offered us their own water to drink. Uh, it was something that completely blew. It blew my mind. How can an invading army come into a country yet still be treated with so much incredible hospitality? It blew my mind. And I said to myself, what better way to learn about a people than to learn about them through the religion? Okay, so I said, okay. I want to learn about Islam just to find out what it is that makes these people so amazing. So, um, so when I was there, I actually bought the Quran, uh, and of course, I didn't know it wasn't supposed to have the, the Arabic at the time, but stuck for a lot. But it was a Quran in English, uh, uh, Quran, and so I read that Quran cover to cover in English, and I said, "Wow, what a beautiful book! 
What a beautiful religion. This is just amazing. And I loved it so much, uh, and I thought it was so beautiful, and I saw these beautiful prayer books that I bought, I don't know how many prayer books, initially as gifts for family, and to take back as a souvenir. Little would I ever know that 20 years later, I would have that same Quran that I would be reciting as a Muslim, and I would have those same prayer books that I would be praying my Salah. SubhanAllah. The wisdom of Salah. And so you see, coming out, and this was 2003, 2004, I finally left in 2005, I spent the next uh, about 10 years as a Christian. Um, very, because of it, I got very involved in youth outreach, helping the poor, helping the homeless, uh, helping the elderly, um, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had spared my life so many times, I said, you know what, I could live 100 lifetimes over, and not be grateful and thankful enough just for this one lifetime that he let me live. So I said, I have to give back somehow. So I got very involved with the church, uh, very much involved with youth outreach, and uh, at one point, about 10, years ago, uh, about 10 years afterwards, I decided, you know what? I want to take it to the next level, and I really want to get out there and go into the seminary uh, to, to become ordained and really start you know, truly involved with the community. And so, alhamdulillah, it was a rahmah, uh, a mercy of Allah, that, uh, that just, maybe just a few weeks before I started going into seminary, uh, I had this incredible uneasiness in my heart. Uh, and the reason I had this uneasiness is because in my heart, I never believed Isa, alayhi salam, Jesus, was God. I never believed that. Even as a child, I never believed Jesus was God. I always believed the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, I always believed he was a prophet and messenger of God. How else can you have an entire world of nearly two billion people practicing a religion? You can't call him. It, only a, a, a prophet of Allah can do this and establish a religion like that. And uh, so, I, uh, so I had this uneasiness. I had these things that I just didn't believe them. And I said, how can I become uh, a priest, a deacon in the Catholic Church and preaching to the people a message that I myself did not even believe? That makes me a hypocrite. I can't do it. I can't. I would be a hypocrite, no different than anybody, uh, any other. And so, uh, alhamdulillah, I had the friend at the time who happened to be Muslim. And alhamdulillah, it was the mercy of Allah that for some reason, I forget what it was, but some reason we got on the subject of, well, uh, that it was eating away at me. And I explained my situation and how I felt. Uh, and they said, well, do you know, everything that you just described, that is Islam. And for me as a person, I never really equated the two together. I knew of Islam, I knew about Islam as a religion, but I never thought of Islam as a religion for myself. I always had these beliefs, but I never made the association. And for all of my, too many years of my life, I was too stubborn and thick-headed in my way of life that I thought I knew what I was best for me. I thought I knew what I needed to do, and what I didn't realize is throughout my whole life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had been uh, calling out to me, but I was too thick-headed and too much into myself to be able to realize and see and hear, and to be able to submit and say, okay, I accept. And uh, alhamdulillah, I was with my friend telling me this. I said, wow, you know this, you know, I never thought of it that way. And so uh, they said, all right, well, why don't you go with the family? We'll go to a Juma and uh, you can talk to the Imam and learn a little bit more. So it's exactly what we did. We went to uh, the Imam in uh, New Jersey, and uh, we went to the lesson there, we listened, and uh, I will never forget, it was one of the most beautiful khutbas, most beautiful sermons I have ever heard in my entire life. Never as a Christian have I heard a sermon so beautiful. And it was all about the sanctity, the preciousness, the value of each and every single individual life not just of people, but of the animals, lives of the trees, the preciousness of the shade that the, that the trees provide us with, the, 
the, the wood that they gave us wood for the houses, um, the water, how scarce it is. They say, was it 98, 99% of all the water in the world is not drinkable. Uh, it's either, most of it's salt water or contaminated water. It's only a small percentage. And so they talk about just how important it was to, for us to protect and preserve every last little drop. And I said, wow, how beautiful is this? You know, never, I've never heard a priest or anybody speaking about just how important all the blessings that uh, God Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has, has provided us and how much we need to protect it and preserve it. Uh, so I thought it was absolutely beautiful. And so, uh, so I went to one or two more Juma after that. And then uh, afterwards they said, okay, well, if you really want to learn more, go find a uh, master that's closest to you back home. Go there and ask to talk to the imam and uh, tell them you want to learn more about Islam. So I said, okay, inshallah. So I uh, went to, to the local masjid, and um, uh, at first I uh, apparently I went to a wrong masjid, <laughs> a different sector, uh, I guess you'd say something like Shia, or I don't know, some really, uh, really kind of out there kind of place. And uh, there was nobody there, the person was really uh, kind of uptight, because I guess it's like a tight-knit kind of click, kind of, I don't know what it is, anyway. Anyway, long story short. So, uh, I was so disappointed because there was nobody there who I could speak with, so I went on the uh, online, and I did the one thing that I would never do, is I actually went online, and I typed in comments on the website saying, hey, I showed up, there was nobody there. And uh, I wouldn't, under normal circumstances, I, wasn't, I would never send a message like that, because you know, it's just gonna get lost, nobody's gonna look at it, nobody call me back. Well, it just so happened to be, that uh, the gentleman who runs the website and everything happened to see the message come through and he responded back to me and he called me that evening. He said, hi, you know, assalamu alaikum, um, brother, blah, blah, blah. I didn't, you know, hear what his name fully was. And uh, he said, hey, you know, I was there, but uh, you know, it was crowded, we have tons of people. And, he, and you know, he's like, oh, okay, you know what? You went to the wrong one. Here, we're about to pray Salat Isha in just a few minutes. Uh, if you have time, when you stop on down, uh, you see it, and then we can talk. So I said, okay, fantastic. I was like, you know what, it's only five minutes away, let me go there. So I walk into this masjid, and this is only six years ago. So I walk into this masjid six years ago, on a, on a Friday, Juma, uh, for Salat Isha, and then walk there, I see, and of course you know how we Muslims are, right? We always wait until like, just when they call the Akama, that we actually run in, in the door to quickly take our spots to pray. Otherwise, it's before that, completely the end. Stop for a while. But, so you know, it's, uh, I arrived, and here there was this big tall man with this big black burly beard, and oh my god, I was terrified, like there was no tomorrow. I'm like, oh my god, what am I doing? I'm like, all right, door's here, I'm staying between the guy and the door. I'm like, nope, 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 clear way out. And uh, this guy looks over and he's like, can I help you? And I'm like, uh, yeah, um, hi, here for uh, the evening prayer, I'm supposed to be talking to somebody. And he's like, oh, okay, are you here for Shahada? <coughs> and I could not remember the name of the guy who I spoke with. So I said, yes, I'm here for Shahada. <laughs> and he goes, mashallah, he gives me this great big old bear hug, and I'm like, Oh my god, thank you, you're not going to kill me, you're not a pet, okay, great. I don't have to cry a chop and run out the door. Oh, this is fantastic. <laughs> so uh, he goes, mashallah, and he goes to the other guys in there, he's like, mashallah, this guy here, he's for you for shahada. And they're like, mashallah, you're here for shahada, wow, that's great. I'm like, oh my god, man, shahada, this guy's a rock star. He's a movie star. I'm like, man, shahada, he, he's like the president of the, the, the whole Muslim world, you know, Shahada, he's like, man, what, a, what a crazy guy, I can't wait. I had no idea what Shahada actually meant. <laughs> I was completely clueless what Shahada was. So, <laughs> um, so they were all introducing me to the whole community. Ah, oh, this guy's here for Shahada, this guy's here for Shahada. And then finally somebody comes up to me and says, Hi, I'm Brother Tarek. You know, we spoke on the phone. I'm so glad you were able to make it. You know, this is really wonderful. And they he says, like, hey, you know, so I, as I understand, everybody's telling saying that you, you're here, you'd like to do your shahada. And he's like, you understand what the shahada is and your testimony of faith and everything like this. And he's talking and talking and talking. 
and I don't even have a second to say a single word. And he's like, and so he concludes, so, so are you sure this is what you want to do? Are you sure you want to take your shahada? And I said, yes, okay, yes, uh, I want to take my shahada and become a Muslim. And then I stopped. I said, oh my God, what did I say? I'm reaching through the air, trying to pull back those words, saying, no, no, I didn't want to say that. I didn't mean to say that. I didn't want to do a shahada. No, I don't want to become a Muslim. I'm just coming here to learn more information. SubhanAllah, Allahu Akbar, Allah put those words in my mouth. I I couldn't even stop. It was just boom, came out. Now I said, I'm like, well, I guess that's it. There's no turning back now. <laughs> I can't tell them it was a mistake. I'm only really like, <laughs> what am I doing? Like, oh, wait, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I really didn't want to take my shahada, you know? It's kind of like, I'm like, I was just coming here for information. I was like, well, at that point, I'm like, the words are out there. I'm like, that's it. I'm done. <laughs> it's all in or nothing. So, uh, so I said, all right. So went there uh, in front of the community right after Salat Isha. And uh, I took my shahada. And uh, alhamdulillah, uh, you know, I, I say alhamdulillah because Allah put uh, so much love in my heart, so much for me in my life, so much I wanted to give back uh, to the world. وقائد الذي يكذب بالدين فذلك الذي يدعو اليتيم ولا يحب على طعام المسكين فويل للمصلين الذين هم عن صلاتهم ساهون